Hey guys, it's Julesy. Okay, so I love to do things last minute. My Uber is supposed to be here in like 20 minutes um, because I'm headed out of the country and I just have poor time management. So let's get into this Instacart review. We back in the natural lighting, girl. Look at the sun because I ain't feel like sitting on my lights to break them down. This past week's episode of, of Insecure was actually pretty difficult to like, I don't know if difficult is the right word. It was just hard to watch because as much as like the characters stay fucking up, like they just, all of them ain't shit except for Daniel with the compassion, <laughs> even though this episode was kind of like oh bruh maybe you really ain't shit either the the humor and the comedy seems to balance it out but this was just a very tense episode and I guess things kind of had to come to a head at this point but it's like you just every episode you just be like damn Issa like damn Issa after last week's episode Issa during the wind up that she does talking about each episode I think she mentioned that Daniel did it on purpose that they scripted it as Daniel jizzing in her eye on purpose like it wasn't some revenge porn shit bruh it's kind of hard for me to really criticize Daniel like yes if, if a guy jizzed on my face on purpose I would be hella pissed hella pissed but for me that's just not a focal point of criticism because he was by far the most mature character and it's kind of like these characters are so immature the barometer is so low it's so low for like any point of like emotional maturity we can grab onto. I'm like, ooh, let me grab onto that. Let me have that. <sighs> so let's just, let's, let's walk through, through this here. Issa and Molly on the phone. Issa's just so judgmental on top of it. It's like, who you, you really have the nerve to be coming at people when like your life, ain't, girl, by far, ain't nobody jealous of your lifestyle at all and can I say something out loud I just I'm, I'm getting through this season and realizing because I think Issa Rae the person is beautiful and I love her style and her hairdos and I believe it's still Felicia Leatherwood who is doing is she doing the hair on the show as well as styles Issa in real life however Issa the character I wish she would have just gave herself a different name so you know we could differentiate the character her hairstyles just be juvenile as fuck I just be like girl it's weird because it's still like slightly professionally done like it's like okay maybe they're purposefully making Issa just look a hot mess because like her her little faux mohawk it be slicked up real tight like you could tell somebody laid hands on that but then it just be like okay they just they just stopped there they just said fuck it I'm really happy the way they showed Mr. Gaines this episode. There is no excuse for xenophobia. I'm really not here for black folks trying to just become the oppressor, claiming that we want liberation and freedom by embracing oppressive mannerisms ourselves. It, you know what I mean? Like, yes, we've been oppressed, but that doesn't mean that we also can't turn around and demean other people. And I think, you know, it was clear to me that Mr. Gaines, based on the comments he made, was not here for his Latino students in a way that was harmful to them. Um, and so now that he's said it out his mouth, y'all get it? Y'all get it? And I think that interaction between Frida and Issa was good and that she was really, like, it was Issa's responsibility to say something to Principal Gaines because I don't think a white person checking a black person on racism or xenophobia or oppression, whatever, when they when they have a black coworker is ever gonna go over well. And I know people were mentioning that from season one that Frida really didn't say anything about um Issa's co-workers but yes and no Issa's been there for seven years if you go on the uh we got y'all website Frida been there for like two three so she might have been a new employee and I'm not gonna let because Frida didn't necessarily speak up for me at work allow this then to go into a edu the education system where I'm supposed to be improving students lives and be okay with the fact that there isn't a school administrator who was point blank period xenophobic to the bulk of his student body so now that we know for a fact he is dissuading latino students from attending an after school program that helps them with their education <clears throat> y'all gonna defend that now y'all gonna defend that now okay i'm trying to put myself in the role of Issa, right like if, if a dude did something to me right and then said well apologize and i did feel like the apology was sincere and then I mean, his statement was rude to say that, well, at least now we're even. He didn't have to say that, but it's not like it wasn't a fact though. You know, like it wasn't like, you know, like I'd have been, I would have been like play mad. And I'm saying, I feel like in my mind, I would be play mad because I feel like Issa isn't really mad at Daniel. I don't even feel like Issa is truly, truly mad at Lawrence. I feel like Issa is coming to a point where she's going to have to face where she is at in life and that she doesn't really, 
she doesn't have control not because someone else is blocking her from control or having said agency over her life she doesn't have control because she's not at that level of maturity to have the awareness where she can take the reins in the right aspects of her life i have to do a whole video about us as specifically black women and the hotation phase, the whole phase and how we view our sexuality and our bodies and going through that whole like where you go something emotionally stressful and so your response is okay well I want to explore this sexual freedom that I, w I haven't explored before and you know for various different reasons we all walk into that space in a different way if some of us just never walk into that space. Um, and Issa walked into that space and just kept tripping over herself. Like, I don't even think she really all the way walked in. Like, she was trying to walk to the space and she just kept, like, tripping over herself, could never make it. She just kept falling over herself. As uncomfortable as, uh, the Lawrence and Issa scene was, very happy that it happened. Very happy they got all they fuck shit off their chest. Don't, neither of them make sense. Neither, neither either makes sense. They both needed to get therapists. They both were dead ass wrong. They both took low blows. I don't, like Lawrence calling Issa a hoe. You was trying to be a hoe though. Like, you know, it's like no matter how much you wanted to own that, somebody calling you that is still demeaning as fuck. I mean, that is a lot, bruh. Uh, it just wasn't a productive conversation in that are they going to get anywhere together no but maybe now they can that they've said what they had to say they can begin to like move forward they don't need to get back together please don't put them don't get them back together please because Lauren's out here first of all so uh, mississippi masala the indian chick butter chicken with the ghetto accent what are you doing like how do you begin to have a fledgling attraction to someone and you immediately go announce it to your office of like six people and y'all are the two minorities minority minorities in the group like what i would have like mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I, like i don't really be dating in dallas because i feel like the men here talk too much so that's an instant turn off for me like who, why are you announcing this why can't we have some discretion be covert why can't we get to know each other without the eyes of the office on because now everyone's gonna constantly be asking y'all about are y'all getting together what's going on with you two have y'all like everyone's gonna be in your business that's such a dumb move on her part and I, I i don't know why lawrence just kind of rolls over into these things you know being a nice guy doesn't really make you a good person you know what i mean like you can be a nice guy in that you are never trying to disrupt the scenario like you are always gonna go with the flow but what are your intentions bruh if you don't have good intentions then you just don't have the confidence or the I just like he's just a mess if Tiffany and Derek are Issa's friends from college technically Tiffany's ain't shit Tiffany ain't nobody friend though let's be let's be true she's she she might be the most annoyingest character of them all it's like girl you just trying to shit on everybody to make boost your own ego I mean if you and Issa are the older closer that's really your girl and you don't need to invite her ex who they had a messy breakup with like there were just so many ways that each of these characters should have prevented this from happening tiffany should have never invited lawrence lawrence should have never accepted the invitation lawrence definitely should have never invited a partner especially because he knew Issa was going to be there especially because he knew it was going to be awkward especially because you know tiffany and Derek ain't really got no friends so what the fuck did you expect bruh why are you playing dumb a partner should have never been like yeah whatever makes you come. like no you should have been like oh okay fine i'm not trying to be messy but i mean bitch you clear she's not a bitch she's a respectable woman of color let me not call her that she already told the whole office so clearly she gonna throw this hole under the bus and he probably gonna deserve it whatever lawrence is woop woop womp womp that isa should have been upfront with tiffany about not being comfortable Tiffany and Lawrence are more wrong in this situation than Issa is to me. So whatever. Issa's little brother. What is going on with him and Kelly though? What is the backstory there? I want to see more of Issa's little brother. You know, he ain't, he ain't my type, but he cute. Okay. Is Lil Ray, the, why don't I don't remember this dude's name, girl? Why am I stressed? Is he trying to holler at Molly? Is that what the setup is going to be? They don't even look like they go together. They don't even look like that type. Molly and Dro, I feel like every, epi every episode, girl, this is like a key of an episode. <laughs> 
every review I feel like I ended on Molly and Dro and just their messiness and it's like this is not an open relationship this is not like a you are having a whole ass affair for his wife to be there and y'all fucking in the bathroom for him to be bringing you gifts for you to be caught up this is just bad and this is and I mean okay it was a little it was all sweet when Issa ruffled her bang and she pulled the tag off that what kind of dress was that I mean it was it was Issa's outfits girl I just don't be knowing Molly girl, we gotta, I just really hope that her deading dro is for real and that she can flex her muscle in the lawyer space. Don't fuck with Laurel, please girl. Please stop rushing into bed with niggas that are in your personal space. Like if you wanna get your whole on girl, I'm not, you know, whatever. Just do it with dudes who when you cut them off, you ain't never gotta see them again. Who not gonna fuck up your career and shit? Fuck up your friendship circle? Bruh, like fuck up your walls and your emotional life, girl. And it's like, y'all wasn't drunk. Tiffany out here serving college freshman beverages, a play on an Amaretto sour. What in the 19 year old drinking without an ID are y'all doing? Amaretto sours, for real? How old is Derek turning? That bathroom scene really was just like, oh no, I'm just so done, I'm so done. And I guess, you know, she finally called her mama. You know what, I'm not really here for child abuse. I be looking at your side eye and y'all when we see these cute little black girls getting sassy on Facebook like the little girl twisted and y'all talking about you gonna snatch her. So let that child express herself in full sentences, leave her be. But if I was Molly mom, I would've snatched the soul out of her for being so damn disrespectful and not call me for five days. And I wanted to say that what Molly's mom said was simple, but I think there's something deeper there. And when she said, he made me feel special more than he hurt me. Is that settling though? Is there maybe her, I kind of wanted her mom to say something a little bit more deeper or I don't know. I was looking for some Alice Walker womanism. <laughs> there's a way to take that as settling and that, oh, did he hurt you? consistently but then the love was slightly higher or did he just really you know did he hurt you at that point in time 30 years ago and yeah that sort of embarrassment that level of distrust it's it's I don't know if you ever truly 100% get past it like it is it's an exp it's it's a lemonade girl you know Beyonce did a whole body of work off of it but that he continued to love you in a very deep way um you know I think there's it was a really simple statement that can be taken either as basic or really beautiful let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. I will be in Denmark next week when that episode, the finale comes on, but I, I got my little HBO Go because the, the, they done had the, the screener site, whatever, still mad about it. But I will definitely try and get my final review up next week week girl i was in thailand last year during the finale why y'all keep playing me I oh my gosh okay clearly there's gonna be a drop in quality of my youtube my instagram reviews between this one and next week because i'm traveling and i'm just i'm not an organized person in the least bit and i got a roll mic bruh and then forgot to get a battery for the mic but that's not why we're here right now we don't really care about the roll mic girl kurt get out of my way how did i get to the whole review this morning and not talk about how isa wrecked her own apartment like what and you know <sighs> i don't like with wendy williams bro i don't but i did read her book when i was in high school and the one thing that did stick with me from that book is when she found out her husband had cheated on her and she was in her home that she purchased and she went to throw something at him and she looked at the versace vibes and then something else she had over here you know she named brand home she was looking at all this name brand expensive stuff she had in the living room talking about wait but i paid for that i would never ever destroy my own stuff when I'm mad at somebody else. Oh, oh, so what you don't do is destroy your own stuff. But the truth is, Issa's not mad at anybody else. Issa's mad at Issa. So Issa destroying her own stuff is her frustration with herself. I don't think it's like, girl, you, you not making a whole lot of money. Your car already wrecked. I don't think it's that smart of a decision. I don't, mm, cause I'm just like, oh, I would never. And I be, I've been big mad. I've been mad until I want to stab somebody with a dull knife so it hurts. <laughs> I've been that mad. Um, but destroying my own stuff just isn't in, that's not my ministry. And who's paying for stuff? If you're, now for real, for real, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this episode. And sorry, so janky. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but look, we just, we just here for the key. And next week, I'll see you next week.